We are going to be talking about life's wake up call and it's ringing. Are you answering? That's the question. So we're going to be talking about some topics that are near and dear to my heart. We're going to be talking about transformation. We're going to be talking about expectations and discovering true freedom, true holistic living. And I used to think that word holistic was, you know, it was spas and it was retreats and it was Costa Rica and it was all of these things. It actually simply means the entire body as a whole. And when we start using this word in the right context, you will start to see changes happen within you, around you, in your business and in your life. And that's why I like to talk about I always mix business and life because they are mixed together. It's really important that we understand that the one affects the other. And if in your personal life, in your health, in your relationships, if there is something off, that will inevitably affect your business life. And sometimes we don't even realize that we are going down this road that is unhealthy it is causing a stress. It's causing frustration. It's causing turmoil in our family or in our business because of one or the other. So buckle up. We're going to dive in today. And the first part of what I talk about is the illusion of perfection. And I'm going to say it's an illusion because it is. There is no perfection in life. We can strive to create the perfect business. We can strive to look perfect when we go out, create the perfect post on social media, but there is no perfect. And if we are worried about what other people think about us, this is where I'd say we need to begin with. Because if you're concerned about other people's opinions of you, then you are going down the wrong road. You are going down a road that isn't going to lead you anywhere successful because most people have opinions that are simply based on their experiences. They are not vast opinions. They haven't traveled the world to understand how the world in its entirety works, or they don't have vast experience in business. They don't have vast experience with varying relationships, people of different cultures, people of different ages. So we have to be really careful if we are striving for perfection because you will be searching and searching and trying to find it, but it's not there. And the way, the reason why I can confidently tell you that is because I was that person. I lived in a fairy tale when I was younger. When I moved to Europe at 22, in my mind, I had this idea of, you know, the perfect marriage and the perfect children, the perfect job, the perfect house, the way everything should be. But the mistake there is who dictates what something should be like? Who is to decide what should or shouldn't be? What is or isn't the perfect marriage? What is normal? And who's normal? And according to what parameters, according to what criteria is a normal marriage? According to your friend or your relative who says that they have a normal marriage or relationship or business. These are the things that I started to realize later on. But as a young woman, I had bought into what society expects of me. And moving to a country that had a very, was very largely dominated um, by males, you really did need to buy into what society expected of you. So very often it was, you know, when in Rome, do as the Romans. So even though I may have had my own ideas, those ideas were considered foreign ideas, right? I was from Canada, living in a European country. 
So I had to learn to adapt to how I believed I needed to fit in to that society in order to have a happy life, because that's what we do. We adapt so that we can feel comfortable in that environment that we're in. But here's what happens when you do that, is that you begin to lose yourself slowly. It doesn't happen quickly. It happens bit by bit by bit, until one day, everything blows up, and you stop and you think, who am I? I actually don't remember who I am. What do I like? What do I love? What makes me happy? When you ask yourself these questions and you can't come up with the answer, it's because you lost yourself somewhere down the road. It is a pitfall that we fall into because when we are trying to cater to everyone, when we are trying to paint the picture of whether it's a big happy family, a big beautiful marriage, or a thriving business, whatever that picture is that you are creating, you are losing who you authentically are in the meantime. Because if it feels hard, whatever it is that you're doing, it means that it is not flowing naturally from you. And I don't mean starting a new endeavor, because if you're going to start a new business, that is going to be hard, but that's hard work. It doesn't mean that it is not aligning with who you are as a person. So the illusion of perfection will end up making you miserable. Maybe not immediately, but in the long run, it will. There is actually research published in the Journal of Happiness Studies suggests that the pursuit of perfection can lead to anxiety, depression, and life dissatisfaction. Well, no kidding, right? If you're always striving for something that is unattainable, are you ever going to be happy? No, because you'll never think you got there. If you have a life goal or anyone, if anyone creates a life goal and that life goal is to live a rich life and have lots of things, the problem with a generalization like that is how do you know when you got there? What does living a rich life mean to you? How many things do you need to have to make you happy? And how do you know when you've reached the epitome of that wonderful life? You don't. It all has to come from inside. And typically it's a feeling that you're going to have. You're not chasing something. It's a feeling that you will develop. So here's what I would love for you to do. We're going to do action step number one today. So on the topic of the illusion of perfection, action step number one, take a moment today to reflect on your pursuits, everything that you have been chasing, everything that you have been hoping and wanting. Are they driven by your desires or are they driven but what, by what you believe is expected of you. That's not an easy one, is it? Are they driven by your desires, your passions for life? Or are they driven by what you think is expected for you to have at this point in your life? Because a lot of disappointment can come from that as well. I expected to be at this point in my life, but I'm not. So the question is, when you made these ideas in your mind that you needed to be at a certain point in your life by now, how was that thought developed? Where did that idea come from? And was it a comparison against where someone else is at in their life right now? And are you trying to catch up to them? When you work in an industry that is highly competitive, it can be very easy to get carried away by trying to attain what other people in the industry have. But what we don't realize is that what they have doesn't necessarily make them better. 
it doesn't necessarily mean that they're living a wonderful life. It simply means that they're going after whatever is driving them. And I'll tell you, a lot of the time, what's driving them is their expectations of what they believe people are expecting of them. Even they are not pursuing who they authentically are. So the sooner you can embrace you, what drives you? What are your desires? Where do you want to be? Never mind where everyone else thinks you need to be, but where do you want to be right now? Let's go to number two, the wake up call. So I did live like that for many years, right? The perfect wife, the perfect mother, the perfect teacher, and cook the perfect food. And everything had to be just right because I needed to fit in to this society. When you, although I have half of me, right? I am what I call a mixed breed. I am half Greek, half Irish. So when living in a Greek country, although I know that I was raised half Greek, I don't look Greek to many people. So people very often will decide whether they like you, don't like you, um, how to interpret who you are by how you look, first impressions. And I was often considered to be a foreigner, even though I was not a foreigner technically because I was half Greek. That was how I was considered to be. And so I was always trying to fight against that. But no, I'm half Greek. I'm just like you. But I didn't really know the language very well. So there was a lot of judgment that I was almost in competition with. And so I would try and learn Greek faster and learn to read Greek faster. And, you know, everything I was just trying to fit in because it's so much easier to fit in than not to. So my wake up call came when I had a massive heart attack one night at 33 years old, a two and a half year old, I have a seven year old and I'm being driven to the hospital late at night by my husband and I'm dying. I actually felt like I was dying and I told him that. I said, I'm going now. And he said, no, you're not going anywhere. I said, I'm going, I can feel it. But in the back of my mind, I didn't want to leave this world, you know, and I was conscious and many people who have a massive heart attack are not conscious when it happens. So I started breathing and, and, and doing exercises I had heard once, which I won't go into that. But when we got to the hospital, you know, they started all of the protocol that they have when you, when you go in with a massive heart attack. But here's what happened. I continued to have heart attacks every day while I was in the hospital. Went in on a Sunday and I was having heart attacks all during the week. Got to the end of the week and I remember I was just in the room. It was a Friday afternoon and I remember looking out the window and it was a three-story building. And I remember the doctor had just come in and he left and he said, I don't know what to do. There's nothing, there's no other medication I can give you right now that is going to stop these heart attacks. There's nothing else I can do. I don't know if you're going to make it past the weekend. I, I don't know what's going to happen here. But somehow, I pray that these stop so we can figure out what's going on with you. So I remember lying there and thinking to myself, what have I done? I'm 33. I have spent the last how many years doing what everyone wanted me to do, doing what everyone expected me to do, of my own volition. Who am I? And what is it that I want? Is this how I want my life to end? Right here, right now. What have I done? I have not accomplished anything that I wanted to actually get done. And this is what was going through my mind. And I kept saying to myself, no, it does not end here. There has got to be more to this life than me lying here now. Otherwise, what was it all for? 
from that introspection, I realized that how, however I had been living up to that point, first of all, I ended up in the hospital with a massive heart attack. So there's a problem for you. Obviously, I had not been treating my body well enough, holistically enough, that that could happen. And I'm talking about mind, spirit, and body. The fact that I was there unhappy with how my life had gone until that point. Unhappy that it would end then. And that's really not the story that I wanted written about me at that point in my life. So two things. One is a little story that I heard, and it is so true. A person dies and they go up to heaven. And they're standing with God, the creator, whoever your God is. They're standing with God and he says, take out your phone. So they take out their phone and he's scrolling through. And he said, I want to show you a different movie. And he starts scrolling through a different movie about your life. And he says, this is what life could have been. Had you just trusted yourself, had you gone for it, had you taken the opportunities, had you not been scared, this is how life could have been, but it's not because you were too scared to follow who you are and be this gift that I offered you when I created you. Oftentimes I think to myself, about that scenario. And is that the scenario I want to be in at the end of my life? No matter where I am, am I on the bed and I'm, I'm 80 years old? Or am I 33 wondering, is this it? Believe it or not, you will never regret chances that you took. You will regret what you didn't do, thought of doing, but we're too scared to do. That is what you were going to regret at the end of life, not taking the chances, not the chances you took. Because the chances you took have a 50% chance of working out really, really well. But we let fear and expectation and what are other people's opinions of us going to say if I go against what is socially accepted? But what we forget is what's socially accepted is just by those people and whatever their experience has dictated. I was, you know, fooling around on, on paper and I was thinking to myself, what would be the most disappointing message that could be written on my gravestone? What would that be? How morbid is that, right? But think about this for a minute. Rather than what I wanted to say, what is what I don't want it to say? So I'm going to read you what I wrote. Here lies a woman who could have lived a fulfilling and authentic life. Instead, she spent her days chasing an illusion of perfection, confining herself in other people's expectations, sacrificing her unique desires and passions and dreams, she leaves behind a life filled with what ifs and could haves, her true potential remaining unexplored. May her journey remind us to seek authenticity, honor our individuality, and courageously live the life we were supposed to live. So, I definitely don't want my gravestone to write that. So therefore, I aspire to live authentically, to speak messages like this to you so that you understand that there is so much you could be doing, should be doing, but maybe you're not because something is holding you back. And that something is either an opinion of someone 
an expectation or fear. So here is your action tip for that part two. Consider journaling about moments when you have felt overwhelmed. What can these experiences tell you about your life and how you have been leading it? Because overwhelm means you are not living in flow. And what does flow mean? It means going against the current of who you actually are. So once you start living according to who you are, believe it or not, life becomes much simpler, much happier, and easier. Everything becomes less of a challenge when you are not trying to be someone you're not. Let's go to part three, the power of choice. So here I am, post-hospital, post-operation, I ended up having triple bypass surgery. Not an easy operation, let me tell you. It also does not have an easy recovery. The recovery is brutal. And when I was in recovery, I realized I had two options. One is to stay home, deathly afraid to leave my house, because what if I have another heart attack? What if my kids are with me and I have a heart attack and die? Um, you know, it's better to be safe than sorry. You know, all of these ideas going through my mind. So what I realized is there are two roads that I've got right now, two two roads. I can go down the road of fear and worry and not living life. This life that I've now been given back. How many people survive a massive heart attack? Another four subsequent heart attacks, triple bypass surgery, then a minor stroke, and then get sent home. How many people? Not many. So really, there was only one path for me to take. And that was the path where I choose life. I have to feel the fear. I've got it. I can't pretend I don't. But move forward anyway. Because what's the worst that's going to happen? If I stay home in fear, do I have a chance of dying? Of course I do. If I go out and live life, is there a chance I could die? Of course there is. I'm going to choose life. And that's what I did. The journey is not easy when you choose life. The journey is not easy when you choose to feel fear and move forward anyways. But when you choose life, you won't have regrets at the end of your life. If you choose fear, you will. I promise you that. So here is an actionable tip for you for the power of choice in your life. I would like you to identify one area of your life that you would like to change. Imagine what it would look like if you had made a different choice and if right now you are struggling to make a decision, what are your different options? And which one is being held in fear and which one would actually provide you more opportunity? Yes, you would have more fear maybe, but the opportunity is greater. Choose the other one. Choose opportunity. Choose fear. Because amazing things happen when you can move yourself on the other side of fear. The comfort zone is very comforting. It's so calm. You feel so warm and fuzzy in there. But it will not make for a happy life. It will make for a life that's nice. It will make for a life that gets you by. But it will not lead you to joy, happiness, your desires, your passions. Visualize making the changes that you want to make. And then when it actually starts to happen, it doesn't feel so hard. If you can already visualize yourself doing it, 
then you're already doing the hard work. So let's go to part four, redefining success. So what I realized over time is that success for me didn't end up being the awards, the trophies, all these little things that I was getting. When I got into real estate and I started producing a lot of real estate and becoming a high producer, and then my picture was going in the newspaper, you know, top agent, second agent in the company and so on. It's wonderful to have that. But let me tell you what happens. You strive for accolades. You strive to get to the next award level and the next award level, which is wonderful. I'm not going to say it's not. But then I'll tell you a week after the awards, you say, now what? I got the award. I sacrificed a lot. I took calls on vacations, which made me upset while I was on vacation, which then affected my vacation with my family. That happened almost every year. Um, going out, having family dinners, family outings, which were interrupted by phone calls, by angry people, by miscommunications. So at what sacrifice are you willing to get the awards, the accolades, and so on? Or is there a way to still strive for what you really want, but to have boundaries? Boundaries of communication. Boundaries how people can treat you. Boundaries of when people can contact you and when they can't. Respecting yourself, your time, and your family enough that you will start to implement boundaries so that you can start living that life that you really, truly desire. Think for a moment. What does success look like to you? And does this look different than it did 10 years ago, five years ago, two years ago, and maybe even moments ago before you started watching this? What does success mean to you? And then when you can figure that out, go down that road. Never mind what success is supposed to look like, according to I don't know who. Everyone will have their own version of what success looks like. I'd like to know what it means to you. Create your own definition of success. And what does feeling fulfilled, feeling joyful, what does that look like for you? And I believe that sometimes these are hard questions for people to answer because sometimes we haven't given ourselves permission. If we're needing to pay bills, and mortgages, and we have responsibilities. Sometimes we say, well, it's not about how I feel. It's just what I have to do. And I don't disagree, but I do believe that there are ways that you can go about doing it, that you don't have to be miserable. You can be in a job or you can create, start a business that you feel passionate about. Money can come from anywhere. It doesn't just have to be that one source that you've been getting it from all these years. Money can come from any direction. You just have to decide which direction you'd like it to come from. And we're going to go on to the last point, which is finally the path to holistic living. So I've taken you down this journey of how I began changing my mindset. So once I've recovered from my open heart surgery, I then decided that yes, I had to keep my teaching job because that helped to pay the bills, but I could also create a new path and I could go down a new path of opening my own business. So I created from the ground up a children's indoor entertainment center, 5,000 square feet from a disgusting building my husband and I started creating. We had ideas. We put them into action. 
and we created a phenomenal two-story children's indoor play area that catered parties and so on. Why did I choose that? Because I saw a gap in the market. I did my research. I did a business plan. I realized that that is something that would do very well where we were living. Now, what was interesting about that is do you think that the people in that European island agreed with my decision? No. But guess what? I didn't care. I had done my research. I knew it would work. I'm not going to be held back by the opinions of people who haven't done it before. If you had done it and it didn't work, I'm going to listen to you. But if you haven't done it, I'm not listening to you. So it did work. It was highly successful. We were filled with parties. Now, were there things that I had to do to generate the business? Of course there were. There was marketing, there was branding, but the point is I had to do it. And I had to see if it would work. I had to see what would happen if I went against my fear and just followed a passion. And what happened was amazing. Understanding that you can go against your fear, you can feel it, but move forward anyways. I then started putting little pieces together and I learned to control my reactions. I improved my communication. I started to set boundaries and one after another, after another, these small stepping stones, life began to change. So holistic living, let's go through it one more time, means to consciously choose to nurture your well-being, listen to your body before it begins screaming at you. And I'm going to say this again, it's really important. You need to listen to your body before it starts screaming at you. And by screaming, we mean health issues because that's what happens when we don't listen to these small little signs we are given that we are not doing well, whether it's mentally, whether it's spiritually, uh, physically, it doesn't matter what realm or part of your body we're talking about. You need to listen to it. But here's the problem. If you don't slow down long enough and stop and pause so that you can hear it, you will miss the signs. And then that is where it leads you down the road to more problems. So let's take a look at the tangible benefits of living a holistic life. This is the 360 version of you now. Physical health. Studies have shown that people who live holistically, incorporating regular exercise, a balanced diet, which means a lot of whole foods, good foods, very good sleep habits. I think sleep is one of the largest issues that we do have, particularly in North America. We have a lot of distractions at night and we go to bed with a lot on our minds. And if you could learn to quiet that and have a better sleep, overall, your health would begin to improve. You would have lower levels of chronic heart disease. My story, as I continued, and the reason I know that holistic living works is because seven years after having triple bypass surgery and all that I went through, I have actually reversed it. I have no symptoms of anything wrong with me anymore. I actually take no medication now. I went from 10 different types of medication to zero. And I mean zero, I take nothing. I take no aspirin, no cholesterol, no blood pressure, nothing. And that is what happens when you can change your mind, change your spirit, and change your physical body to your mental health. The practice of mindfulness, this for me has been life-changing. It has reduced stress. I used to have anxiety attacks. 
I had depression, which is actually a normal side effect after open heart surgery. I have had all of that. And becoming mindful of what my body is telling me, becoming mindful if my body is tired, I know that the next point after tired will be sick. Becoming mindful of my sleep. If my sleep isn't good, then I need to tweak something. Usually it goes back to food. If my body is not feeling energetic and alive, it's likely going back to food again. Because here's the thing. You can say that it's your job. You can say that it's stress. You can say it's anxiety from work and the challenges of society and the environment. It's not. Because believe it or not, we all live in the same environment and society. However, we can react to it in different ways. And if my body is healthy and my mind is positive and I'm not reactionary, those problems really don't seem as bad as they are. We will exaggerate the problems going on in the world if we ourselves have a deficiency somewhere. Whether it's our mindset and we are being more negative, whether it's your body and you are sleep deprived, or believe it or not, if you have been eating the wrong types of food for the last few weeks, that will affect how you feel. 100% guaranteed. I know because I have experimented with everything. Your spiritual health. Research has demonstrated that those who lead a holistic lifestyle and nurture their spiritual health will have a better quality of life. You will feel more connected to others and the world around you. A deep spiritual connection often provides a sense of purpose and meaning in life. It's true. Spiritually, you can decide where your heart and soul lie. But if you don't believe that there is a higher spirit out there that is looking out for you, maybe you just want to do a little more research. I have experienced multiple miraculous moments in my own life. The fact that I am sitting here is a miraculous moment in itself. So I do believe that God has played a huge part in my life. I would not be here. I should not be here, but I am. And I have overcome so many different challenges. And I'm still here. And I believe there's a reason for that. So when you do feel a spiritual strength, I feel as though you can go through life with a lot more determination and persistence. And you just don't give up that easily because you know that there is a higher power who's got your back. But you also need to help yourself. I'm going to tell you that joke. You know that joke? Where there is a flood. A flood is happening and there is a man standing outside his front door. Flood's happening. Rain is coming down. Man comes by with a canoe. He says, jump in, jump in. He says, no, no, no. God's going to save me. I'm good. Okay. He goes off. He paddles off. The man realizes the water's rising. He moves to the second story window. He looks outside. He says, oh, no, I better keep moving up. Moves up to the, the, the roof. Helicopter comes by. Buddy, get in. We're here to help you. No, 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 no. God's going to save me. I'm okay. Helicopter flies away. Okay. The water rises, takes the house away, takes the man away. The man dies. He goes up to heaven. He says, God, I was waiting for you. Why didn't you come? He says, I sent a canoe. I sent a helicopter. What more can I do for you? We have to help ourselves. So we want to be healthy. We want to live holistic lives. We have to take care of our mind, our spirit, and our body. Finally, longevity. There are blue zones 
in the world. There are five blue zones in the world where people live the longest, healthiest lives. What is the common trait among these five blue zones? Because they have a holistic approach to living. A diet rich in plant-based foods, regular physical activity, strong social connections, and a sense of purpose. Everything we've been talking about today. That is what those five regions in the world have in common. That the people there live holistically rich lives. You don't have to be in one of those blue zones. You could do that right now where you are. If you wanted to. It's about desire. So, here is my actionable tip for you. Choose one holistic practice to incorporate into your daily routine. Start small. Maybe it's five minutes of being mindful, sitting outside, just listening. Close your eyes and listen to what's going on around you. And just breathe. You know that breathing has literally saved my life countless times. And I mean deep breathing, calming myself down. I cannot tell you the amount of times I have been in a situation where my heart rate starts rising so fast that if I allow it to keep going, I will have a heart attack. And sometimes it happens with heat. Sometimes it happens with stress. And it is my breathing that has brought me back down and I did not even end up having to go to the hospital. Swapping out some things that you may have been doing until now with more healthy alternatives. And if you continue doing that day after day after day, I'm telling you, you can change your entire life. If I can reverse heart disease and no longer be on medication for the last 11 years, you can most definitely make small changes in your life. If you need someone to help you, if you want someone to help you along this journey, I am here to support you. I offer courses and I offer coaching and so on because I have been through the gamut of what a person can go through. Personal life, health, business, I know the ups and downs, so I can guide you to the path of more least resistance, if that makes sense. What part of your life do you want to make tweaks? What part of your life right now do you know that if you improved it, everything would change? What is that for you? Write it down. Think about it. And start making small steps toward it. Together we can redefine what it means to live, work, and feel balanced. Living a holistic way of life is not far off for you. It just requires a few tweaks here and there. And I'm here to help you. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Write me a comment. Let me know one thing that has stood out to you today. Share this episode with someone who you think needs to hear this because you feel that the message is important and may somehow move them toward making a better life for themselves so they don't have those regrets at the end of life. Bye for now.